this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create this open sign that you can see here. We'll show you how to create a basic vector set for the border and the drill holes, and we'll look at important vectors for the open text. And with all the vectors laid out, we'll look at how we can create a flat bottom VCAV toolpath that will run between the inner border and the text. We'll show you how to create a drilling toolpath for the hanging holes, the chamfer toolpath for the beveled edge, and the profile toolpath to cut the open sign out. So let's just go to File, Close. So let's start by creating a new file. So here we're in the job setup form. We're going to select a single sided job. And we need to specify our job size. That's the width, height and thickness of the part that you want to make. In this case, we want to go with a width of 15 inches. We want to have a height here of 10 inches and the material thickness that we're going to be looking at working with is half an inch. The Z0 position, we're going to set that to the top of our material. So we'll use the material surface option here. Then our XY datum position is currently in the lower left hand corner. You can see that from this radio button here, the red dot in the graphic that represents our job space, along with this red square in the corner in our 2D view. Now, for laying out our part, we're actually going to set this so it's in the centre of our job. Sometimes it's just easier to have everything set uh, centrally within your part. Next up, we've got modelling resolution. We don't really need to worry about this as we're not using any form of 3D data in this session. So we can simply go ahead and then press OK. So to begin with, we're going to look at drawing an ellipse. So to draw an ellipse, we simply come over to the Create Vectors section of the Drawing tab and we're going to use this icon here to draw an ellipse. So we could draw an ellipse by simply drawing a shape in by dragging the left mouse key out to create a shape. Or we'll just Control z to delete that. And the other way we can do this is by specifying uh, your anchor point position along with the size and height and that's what we're going to do in this example. So we're going to set our anchor point to be in the centre of our job, which is at x0, y0. And that's why I've set up our x0, y0 position to the centre of our job for when we are designing our part, because sometimes it's easy to just reference the anchor point to 0, 0 when we know it's in the centre of our workspace. So here we're going to put x at 0 and y at 0 as well. So next we need to specify the width and height of the ellipse. So we're going to make the width 12 inches and the height of that is going to be 7.5. We can press create and you can see it's added that there to our job space. And whilst we're in the form, we may as well make the second ellipse. So all we're going to do is just edit the width and height dimensions. We're going to keep the anchor point at x0, y0. And we're just going to make this a little bit bigger to create the border effect. So we'll make the width of this 13 and the height of this 8.5, press create, close out and there we have our two ellipse vectors. So next up we're going to look at drawing in some circles that represent the pilot holes uh, in order for us to hang this open sign. So to do that let's go over to the draw circle tool and in here we'll open that up. So this time, rather than specify the X and Y position, the centre point for our uh, circle, we're actually just going to manually position that, making use of the smart snapping features. So we need to specify a radius or a diameter. In this case, we're going to go with a diameter of a quarter of an inch. And then I'd like to position our circle so it's directly in the middle of this point here, and this point here. And because I've got a smart snapping switched on, you'll notice that when I drag over, it automatically pulls out the midpoint between those two points. And I can simply click and it will apply that there. We could come over to the right hand side and do the same. So we'll hover over this point here, hover over this point here, come back on ourselves, and you can see it's pulled out the midpoint between those two points that we were hovering over. And I can simply click 
and it's applied that there. So we can close out here. So now we could look at bringing in the open text. So we have an EPS file that has been kindly provided to us by VectorArt.com. That's what we're going to use to bring into our session today. So we're going to go to Import Vectors and then from the Open Sign Project folder we're going to use the OpenSign.EPS file and then we can simply press Open and that will bring that into our job. If we use this option here to zoom active view to our drawing limits, you can see that it's a little bit within our job space, but mostly it's actually in the open space. And so when you bring vectors that have been created in an external CAD program, the vectors will be imported to the coordinate location at which they were originally saved out to. So in this case, we need to look at aligning uh, our open text to the centre of our job. And there's two ways we can do this. We can take the centre and just drag that into the centre into position like so. If we press Ctrl Z. The other option is we could take that, go into our alignment tools and use this option here to align to our material both vertically and horizontally. So there's various different ways that you can move and align objects to various points within your job. And now we can look at resizing the vectors here to make them a little bit bigger. So with those vectors selected, let's go over to Transform Objects and use the option here to set selected object size. So here we have the option to scale the selection or scale items individually. In this case, we want to scale everything as one selection. We're going to use the option to link XY, where we're just going to alter the width of this to 9 and because we have link XY checked it's just going to auto scale the height according to whatever we add into the width here. And then we can simply press apply and you can see it's updated that there for us. So then we can close out and we'll just use this option here to fit our view to our drawing limits there. And we've pretty much got all of our vectors set up and now we can start to think about machining this. So we're going to leave the drawing tab and switch over to the toolpaths tab using this icon here. That will temporarily undraw our design tab on the left hand side and it will open up the toolpath tab on the right hand side where we have lots of different options to create toolpaths from our vectors. So the first and most important thing that we need to do before we start calculating any toolpaths is to check over our material setup. And this is where we're going to relate what we do in the software to what we do on the CNC machine. So here we want to use the set option here. So here is where we verify our material thickness of the material we're cutting into, in which case we're going to leave that at a half an inch. XY datum position, so we currently have that uh, where the X0, Y0 is at the centre. And so we did that just to make it easier for us to draw shapes when 0, 0 is in the centre of our job. However, when it comes to toolpathing, I'm going to change this to be in the lower left hand corner as that's the way I have it set up on my machine. So you're going to set it up to however it is on your machine also. Then we need to specify our Z0 position. So we're going to set our zeros on the material surface of our job. Model position and material. This area doesn't matter to us in this example because we're not working with 3D data. So we ignore this section completely. Moving on down, we have rapid Z gaps above our material. So these are just values that are used for the tool to retract to before it moves to the next position in the toolpath. So the important thing here is just to ensure that these values are high enough that the tool will clear any clamping or hold down method that you may be using. So I'm just going to leave that set to 0.2 for the clearance and 0.2 for the plunge. And then we have the home start position. This is just a value that we enter to give the software a location to move the tool to before we start the cut. So we'll leave that x0, y0 with a z gap above the material of 
And then we could simply go ahead and press OK, assuming that everything is safe and appropriate for your own setup. So we'll go ahead now and press OK. So now we're ready to create our first toolpath and we're going to look at machining everything in between this vector here and the text that we've got here, whereby we want a flat bottom with a nice beveled edge. So we're going to look at using the VCAF toolpath. So we need to select the vectors in order for us to apply the toolpath to. So I'm gonna show you how we can just simply use the mouse left key and just drag up and everything that's within that box, when I let go, will be selected as part of that selection. So we have our inner border and we've got the open vector here. We want to machine everything between the two. So with those vectors selected, let's go over into the VCAV toolpath. So we're going to start by specifying our cut depths. So our start depth, we're going to set that at zero. And that's going to be off the top of our material surface. Now, because we've selected to machine the text inside of a vector, the tool will machine away everything in between the text and the inner boundary. And the way that the VCAV toolpath works is the depth of the toolpath is controlled purely by the width of the area between the vectors, by the angle and maximum cutting ability of the tool. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to actually limit the V-carving where we can look at specifying a flat depth. So we can check that option here and we can say we want to machine down to 0.2 in this case. And so it would select our V-bit tool. So you can see already within my selection, we have a 90 degree half inch V-bit in there. I'm happy to use that. We can use the edit options just to check over the settings that we've got for this tool, ensuring that they're safe and appropriate for this particular toolpath. Now, as we are working with such a large surface area, we could also take advantage of the fact that we can clear the majority of the space using a flat tool. And then we can just use the V-bit for the beveled areas that require the V-bit tool, so for the border and around the outside of the vectors for the open sign. So as it stands, if we were to clear this out using only a V-bit tool, then we wouldn't see a smooth, clear result for the flat areas as we are using a pointed tool. And so for that reason, we're going to look at clearing the flat areas using a quarter inch end mill. And so to do that, we can specify this option here to use clearance tool. So when we check that, that then gives us the ability to input multiple tools. Well, we can use the select option and that will open up the tool database. We can select that quarter inch end mill, press select and we can see that it's been added to our tool list here. So we'll be clearing out all of the the wide flat areas using the quarter inch end mill and then we'll be going over the details using that 90 degree half inch V bit. So then we can simply go ahead and specify uh, the strategy for the clearance tool. So we'll do that in an offset strategy and then we can simply give that a name. We're just going to call this one VCARV and then simply go ahead and press calculate and the software will automatically open up the preview toolpaths form on the right hand side and we're presented with a 3D view where we can visualise the toolpaths themselves. So note in our toolpath list we have two toolpaths, we have VCARV clear one, so that's using that quarter inch end mill to clear the majority of that material away using that flat tool and then we have a second toolpath which is called the VCARV toolpath and that's using the V-bit tool. So let's just undraw the visibility of the VCAF toolpath and we're just going to take a look at the clearance tool as this is the tool that we'd use to machine first. So we can see the wireframe here of what that would look like. So let's just take a look at the actual preview itself. So we're just going to click on the clear toolpath and then just working our way down the form we want to see the machined area colour. We'll just go the material colour for now. And then if we just slow down that preview, we can just preview the toolpath and you can see it's going in there. 
cutting that out. So if we just increase the speed of our preview. Okay, and that's what we would be left with. So if we put that in the ISO view, you can see that everywhere around the open text itself is nice and flat. It's a much better result than if we was to just have used just the VBIT tool to have cleared that area. And you can see we've got material left to go in with the VBIT tool to finish that off at all of the spaces that that end mill just could not get to. So I intend to paint this sign up and I'd like to have a red background. So we can preview that within our toolpath preview whereby we could set the global fill colour to you can see it's already pulled out gold, that was the last used colour. But let's say we wanted to make that a dark red and we can see the result of that there. And then what we can do is we could take a look at the V-carve toolpath. So you can see we're just going around the edge to create the bevel and we're just going around the outside and inside of the open text. So we'll go ahead and we'll preview that again. We'll just slow that down. And then we'll just preview that so you can see it's getting in at the detail. It's creating the beveled edge for us. And if we just increase the speed of that so you can see what that looks like. And you can see it's now got to the bottom where it's flat and we've got a nice beveled edge there. And you can see if we just speed that right up, we'll see the end result of our sign. And that's what it will look like. So you can see how the beveled edge just really gives it a real nice effect. And then by using the flat tool, we've managed to clear away the majority of the flat space in order for us to actually get the nice flat bottom there. And then going in afterwards with the V-bit tool to create the beveled edge effect. So next up, we're going to look at creating our pilot holes using the drilling toolpath just to mark in where we're going to hang our open sign. So we're going to close out here. We'll put this in the Z view. I'm actually going to look at tiling our windows vertically so that we can see both the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right hand side. So first off, we need to select our vector. So we're going to take this circle here, hold down shift and select this circle here and then we're going to go into the drilling toolpath. So here we're going to set a start depth of zero so that's going to be on the material surface and then we're going to input a cut depth so in this case we're going to go with 0.375 there and then we need to select a tool from our tool database. So you can use the select option here and you can see we already have a quarter inch drill within our tool database. Check over the settings ensuring that they're safe and appropriate for this particular toolpath and if they are then you can go ahead and press select. So working our way down the form, we have the option to use PEC drilling. And so this allows the tool to retract after each pass to help remove material and to cool the tool down. So we're just going to leave this for this example. And then we're just going to give that a name and we'll just call that drill. And then we'll go ahead and then we'll calculate that. And again, you can see that the software has automatically opened up the preview toolpaths form and you can see we have the drill toolpath has been added to our toolpath list. And then we can simply go ahead and just preview that toolpath to see the effect of that. We could maximise the 3D view and we could see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So we could just put that in the ISO view. Let's go ahead and tile our windows again and then we'll close out. And so now we could look at using this vector here to create a chamfered beveled edge for the sign. So with that vector selected, let's go over into the chamfer toolpath. Okay, so here we're going to specify our start depth at zero. We're going to use a 90 degree half inch V-bit tool and I can see that's currently listed here. If that wasn't or I wanted to use a different tool, I could use the select option to open up the tool database to select the appropriate tool that I need to use. 
then we need to specify our chamfer dimensions. Okay, so this is where we choose how deep or how wide you want to cut your chamfer. In this case, I'd like to cut this at a cut depth and a width of 0.2. Okay, because I'm using a 45 degree angle for the chamfer based on my 90 degree tool, the width and the cut depth will be the same here. And so we're going to have a width of that of 0.2 and the cut depth is going to go down 0.2 as well. Okay, we'll just put in an overcut here of zero. We don't need to do that there. And then we're going to specify the chamfer to be on the outside of our vector where it's going to slope downwards. So we're going to use that option there. We can give that a name. We'll just call that one chamfer and we could go ahead and press calculate. And then we can simply go ahead and preview this toolpath to see what that looks like. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now that the chamfer is in place, we can now go ahead and create a cutout toolpath using the same vector to cut our sign out of our material block. So we're going to close out of the preview toolpath form and we're going to go into the profile toolpath. So the start depth for this is going to be at zero. We're cutting all the way through our material. So we could type in Z followed by the equals key and the software will automatically input the material thickness that we've set for this job, which we can see is at 0 0.5. We need to specify a tool. So the tool I'd like to use is a quarter inch end mill and I can see that that is currently in our list here. I'm going to use this option here to show some of our advanced options. So we're going to take advantage of one of the settings here to help us cut the part out. So we're going to machine the vectors on the outside of those vectors and we're going to specify an allowance offset. So when we created the chamfer toolpath, we cut down 0.2 of an inch, which meant we cut out 0.2 wide. So we're going to create an offset that's going to be 0.2 out so that we don't cut into the chamfer that we've already created here. So here we're just going to put in an offset of 0.2 and then we can move on down. We can think about adding tabs to our toolpath if we wanted to. And so tabs is material that's left on to hold the part in place when we cut the part out, which is really useful if you don't have a vacuum hold down system. So we're going to add tabs here. We're going to specify a length of 0.15 and we're going to specify a thickness here of 0.1 and that should be enough to hold that in place. And if we use the edit option here, we can specify how many tabs we want in there. For example, we could put three in there and we could say add tabs and it will add those tabs in place. We can move them or delete them if we wanted to. However, I'm happy with where they're located right now. So I'm going to leave them where they are. So we could use the close option here. And then we can move on down and we can give that a name. We'll just call this one profile and then we'll simply go ahead and press calculate. And then we can preview that toolpath and then we can maximize the 3D view and we can see that the chamfer is still in place there, but we've been able to cut the sign out of our material block and it's held together using these three tabs. And we can then easily manually remove and sand up to just hide where those tab locations once were. And so it's important that you take a look at your toolpath preview is what you see here is what you're going to see on your CNC machine. And so if it doesn't look right at this stage, then now is the time to change your toolpaths, edit them until you like the look of the preview that you can see here. And so at this stage, I'm happy to go ahead and save out our toolpaths into a format that my CNC machine would understand. So we can just close out here and then what we can do is we can go over to the save toolpath option. Okay, so we have various different options. We can save a selected toolpath and it will save the toolpath you currently have selected. You can see it's listed here in the toolpaths to be saved section. 
We can save visible toolpaths to one file. So let's switch on the visibility of all of those toolpaths. Okay, now we do have an error here and that's because all of the tools that we're listing here are currently using different tools. And I don't have an automatic tool changer on my machine, so I can't actually make use of this option. However, if they were using just the same tool, then I could make use of this option. In this case, I'm going to look at outputting all of the visible toolpaths to multiple files. It will create a file for each one of these toolpaths. So we're going to use that option here, and we can see that they're all listed here in our toolpaths to be saved list. And so for demonstration purposes, we're going to save these toolpaths to our desktop machine that uses the post processor G code. And then we can simply use the option to save the toolpath. And then we can give that a name. So we could just delete this tool, this name here. So this name is actually taken from this toolpath VCAF clear one. So we're just going to call this one open sign like so and it will save that as a dot tap file and we can press save and then what we can do is we can just pull up that folder okay and so here is all of the dot tap files here and you can see that the software has put open sign at the front of each one of those toolpaths and it's ordered them in numerical order one to five we've got vcarve clear which is our first one all the way down to the last one which is our profile and then we can take those files over to our CNC machine to cut the open sign out. So let's just close out of here. We're just going to undraw the visibility of all of those toolpaths. And so that pretty much completes this tutorial. So let's go ahead and save this file. So we'll go to File, Save As, and in the Project folder, we're just going to call this one Open Sign Toolpaths. Press Save and you can access that from the project folder.